My name is Martha Nance. I'm the uh, medical director of the Huntington's Disease uh, Center of Excellence at Hennepin County Medical Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I'm a neurologist and a geneticist. Many pediatric neurologists are not very familiar with Huntington's disease. Um, and adult neurologists who specialize in Huntington's disease may not be all that familiar with children. Um, so there's sometimes uh, challenges, too, in recognizing the, the symptoms because they can be a little bit different than adults. If the first symptoms of Huntington's disease have to do with mood or irritability or behavior changes, those kind of things are so common in children as they, as they go from being young children to adolescents anyway that it can be hard to tell whether, whether this is a behavior change that's caused by a disease or whether it's just normal adolescence. Apparent changes in thinking and memory may just be, um, you know, sometimes you hit a, a bumpy year at school where you're taking classes that are difficult and you're just not doing as well as you used to, and it doesn't mean that you have a disease, but you're just hitting some more challenging classes. We'll often do every test uh, that we can think of besides the gene test first, and then we treat depression. We make sure we've looked at the brain scan. We do cognitive testing to see how a person is functioning right now so that we have something to compare to in six months or two years in case there's a change. And then we have the child come back in six months or a year if the child is developing Huntington's disease, um, this is a disease that progresses. So in six months or a year or two years, there will be changes for the worse, even if we've done everything we can to optimize the home situation or to treat the depression. So we often wait six months or a year or even more um, before we leap to doing the gene test. There's one big reason that we pause before doing a gene test in a child. Um, and that is that the gene test doesn't tell you whether the person is currently having symptoms of Huntington's disease or not. So you want to be pretty sure that the symptoms that you're seeing are really Huntington's disease symptoms or you're basically doing a predictive gene test. If a child were to come in, for instance, complaining of headaches and blurry vision and upset stomach, if the doctor said, oh, you're at risk for Huntington's disease, let's do the gene test, uh, even if the child tests positive, well, those aren't symptoms of Huntington's disease. So you've just done a predictive gene test, and you still don't know why the, why the child is having headaches and upset stomach and blurry vision. There's I think great potential harm to a child like that who went in with a headache, came out knowing that they have um, a um, HD gene mutation that is of a size that's likely to cause HD when they're 50 or 30, and here they are 15 years old, and now they know they have the Huntington's gene, but they still don't have an answer to the, why they're having the symptoms that they're having. We really don't want to do that in a kid. Um, we want children to grow up to be young adults and to be able to decide for themselves whether they want to have a predictive gene test or not.